Good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today we're going to be painting a seascape, but before we get started, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up, and if you like what you see, consider subscribing. I'm going to have three to four new videos coming out per week, and if you really like what you see, all of these demos are for sale in my store. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to put our reference photo up here on the right side of the screen just so you can take a look. It's a pretty simple scene. It's just two boats. It's a little bit of a, I guess, some land in the background there, but it's really just going to be sky, water, and then our, our two boats there. So hopefully this painting is going to be for those of you that maybe are a bit intimidated by painting water. I think it's one of the more difficult things to paint when you first get started, but it uh, once you figure it out, it's, it's really pretty simple. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already got a little water over here on my palette. I'm going to spray my paper just to get it wet. And we're going to be keeping our sky fairly neutral, but just maybe on the warmer side of things. Just going to drop some water into these squares. All right. I've got a little yellow ochre here. Put that in there. A little burnt sienna. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's just pull that across. Yeah, I think that looks nice. I'm going to keep it pretty watery towards the top to try to maintain its light. And as we get closer to the bottom, we'll introduce a bit more color, a bit more pigment. Try to keep that still somewhat neutral. Yep. And the only thing I'm going to be thinking about painting around is going to be the boats at the very bottom. And I'll, I'll explain that once we get down there. All right, just adding a little bit more pigment as we work our way down. And since the sky is so large in this painting, I think we'd be doing a little bit of a disservice if we didn't add some clouds to it just to add a little bit of interest. So. We will be doing that as well. I'm going to add my first bit of cool color just to darken it up a little bit. Okay. A little yellow ochre. Now I need to be careful to really kind of not get this too watery. I'm going to try to stop adding water if I can. Okay. It's coming along very nicely. All right, let's get some really strong yellow ochre over there. Pull a little of this. This is Hansa, I think it's Hansa Yellow Medium. Maybe just to simulate a kind of a sunrise or something back there. I don't know. All right. Now, we're getting down to where we're also going to have some land mass here. So, I'm going to darken things up. I'm just going to grab my, it's, it's a, currently a warmer color in our palette, so I'm going to grab some cool colors and neutralize it. This is neutral tint, and then these are two grays, um, Joseph Zabuckvich grays by Daniel Smith. Get a little warmer there. I'm going to just kind of work through here just a little bit. This is really just to kind of lay the foundation for our land mass. All right, pull that through there. Now, we're going to start transitioning to our water. What I see a lot of people do is they immediately start to go cool with the color, but really, all water is is a reflection of our sky. We're going to have some blues in there as we get closer to the bottom, but along this kind of horizon border here, we're really going to reflect the sky. I may Keep it a shade cooler, but it's it's going to be a fairly warm color. All right, so let's start working in here. And I also want it to be fairly light. I want it to be able to, um, or I guess I want our reflections later on to be very sharp and vivid. So what I'm doing here is I'm just touching along this wet edge, trying to dry it up a little bit so that when I add my water, it doesn't pull that pigment straight down the page. All right, that's nice and watery. Let's start working through here. OK. 
Okay. And the only thing I do want to cut around here is just the top of this boat. Not the body or anything else. I just want to leave something there so that I can kind of add some highlights on the tops of those boats. Yeah. Right like that. All right. Okay. I'm going to spray this again just to keep it wet. And let's add, I mentioned some clouds. So while this is still wet, let's grab some darker, darker pigment. I'm going to grab, I've got kind of a fat wide brush here I'm going to use. Let's get something fairly warm. The sky is pretty warm. Let's thicken that up and let's just Just kind of add a few, not much, but just a little bit of interest to our sky here. Okay. And I'm going to touch it up just that one time, and then I'm, I'm really going to leave it alone. I may dab it slightly with a paper towel here in a minute, but I'm not, I'm really, when you're making clouds in your skies, less is always more. All right, let's keep working on our water here. Let's get that with a little more yellow ochre just to reflect our sky. Again, trying to keep it nice and light. And now we're going to slowly start adding our cools here. I'm going to start cooling this down. Pulling a little cobalt, cobalt blue, a little cerulean. Yeah, and we're going to just slowly darken this up. All right. Now as I get closer to the bottom, I'm gonna to wanna to deepen my blues here. This is a little ultramarine. Okay. Then I'm gonna add some neutral tint. I just wanna darken this up. Right like that. Okay. So we're getting there. Let's see, what do I wanna do? Let me just touch the very kind of top of that cloud there. Just a couple of places. Man, that's just, if it's already too light now, it's, it's lighter than I want it. This is gonna dry even lighter. So I need to, and I hate coming back and, and touching in skies just because they tend to look so much better if you can get it on your first try. But I can tell you that is too light. It's not gonna have an effect at all. So I've got some very dark pigment here. I'm purposely going darker than I think I should just because I, I don't want to have to come back and do this again. All right. And I'm just keeping some very sort of thin lines there for our, I guess, horizon type clouds. Blot a couple of those out. Okay. All right, <clears throat> I don't think that's too bad. I'm gonna clear this at the bottom. And now, what I also wanna do is, while we're working water, there's, there's two things we need to be thinking about. One is the texture of the water. And what I mean by that are the kind of gentle waves and ripples that we see. And then the second aspect are the reflections of the objects that are on the water. Now for the texture, we typically wanna to try to do some of that while this is still wet. And what we're gonna do is just like when I do the foregrounds in a cityscape, the bottom of our page is gonna be darker. I wanna create this kind of uh, gradient down the page. <clears throat> but if I can, while this is still wet, I wanna come through here and just add some, I'm just, I'm just touching the paper here. And I've got some pretty thick pigment. It's pretty, pretty cool and pretty dark. But I'm, I'm really just, I'm just touching things. I'm just trying to get a little bit of texture. Nothing too crazy. All right. I think I'm going to leave that alone for now. The very last thing I want to do while this is still wet is I want to add just a little bit of our landscape back there. So 
I've got some neutral tint. This is already our cool wash. I added some burnt sienna. This is some viridian over here. Normally I mix all my greens uh, just because they don't, for some reason, greens and watercolor, they don't work so well. But I want to keep this just kind of, you know, not, not too much detail, which is why I want to do this while this is still wet here. Right, I'm gonna let the water um, on my paper kind of kind of paint the scene for me. Right, I'm just touching, just touching through there. And I'll grab a little bit more of that burnt sienna just to add a. Oops, that's maybe a little bit too warm, but just to add a variation in color in there. Yeah, something like that. And I know I said that, oh, you know, that, that kind of color got a little messed up. I think it's going to be fine. I may just dab it with a paper towel. I do want to try to keep the bottom edge of this uh, land area a little bit cleaner. I'm okay if it bleeds up towards the sky. Those could be trees and other uh, masts and things of sailboats. I'm fine with that. But on, I kind of want to keep this water a little bit cleaner. In theory, it could just be a reflection, um, but I want to I wanna leave us some open space so I can get some really dark reflections for these boats. So, anyways, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe come in here and scratch out a few. Could be masts. And you know what? While this is still wet, I want to get that a little darker. I'm just going to grab some, some pure neutral tint there. Just come along, just the very bottom, right? Not much at all. All right, there we go. I think that looks good. Okay, let's let this dry. We're going to come back and we're going to start on our boats. All right, we are back. This is now completely dry and we're going to get started on our second wash. Just quickly, off camera, I did take a paper towel and dab where these two sails are before, right as I turn the camera off, because I just remembered that we're going to be painting these sails and they're going to be sort of light and translucent. And I don't want the, uh, the land mass back here to stick through. So I just took a paper towel and just kind of blotted them out. All right. So we're going to start with our boat back here. We're going to start with objects that are further away and move closer to the viewer. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to spray a little water on our paper here just to get things moving along. And we're gonna start with the sail and mass and work down to the body. I've got some dark pigment just from our other mixes we were doing earlier. And I'm just gonna pull this down, try to make it as clean as possible. And then what I'm gonna do is for our sails, I'm gonna try to keep them fairly warm and translucent. So I'm going to grab a bigger brush just to kind of mix a color over here and then I'm going to use my little brush to to introduce it to the paper. All right. And that mast should kind of melt in with it as well. Okay. That's not too bad. Let's do the same thing here. That's a little dark. That's okay. Just working the water on there. All right. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to grab a little bit of that burnt sienna and just kind of dab it along that mast and let it kind of bleed into the sail just to add a little bit of interest. Spray a little more water. All right, let's work on our boat here. I'm gonna grab some darker paint. We're gonna work right along the top of the boat there. And you'll see I left a little bit of the top of this boat white just to kind of add a highlight and the same thing over here. We're gonna come back later with some gouache and we'll be able to kind of add some more highlights, but 
it's always difficult to get that contrast when painting against sky or water because it's typically done on the first wash. And so if you have something lighter than the sky, you really have to just use the, uh, the white part of the paper. All right, I'm going to cool down this top line here and just let it kind of bleed into that water I added to the paper. I'm just adding some cobalt blue just to give it a little color. Okay. Pull this down there. Okay, and I think that's pretty good so far for that boat. Again, since it's in the distance, it's not our main boat. I'm not, I'm not too concerned with getting you know. Crazy detail going. I think that looks pretty good for now. All right, now let's work on our main boat here. This is kind of the main subject. It's the eye catcher of our painting, so we need to be pretty careful. Something I'm gonna do first, we're gonna work on this mast and I'm gonna grab a ruler to make sure I get a nice straight edge. If you end up, when you're painting boats with a mast that is not straight, it can really, it's hard to fix and it can, it can kind of ruin the impression you're going for. So I'm going to just grab my ruler and just barely work my way down, right like that. All right, and we're going to employ the same strategy with these sails. I want to keep them warm and somewhat translucent. We're going to warm them up a little bit more since these are, these are closer to our viewer. So really everything over here is going to be a little bit darker. And what I'm also going to do is I want to try to get some aspect or I want to get some kind of a transition in the sail. I don't want it to be just all one tone. So I'm going to grab just pure water and paint along next to it here and let that color kind of bleed over towards the edge. Yeah. Something right like that. And then I'm going to grab my smaller brush here. We're going to come in and just down the mast here. We're just adding a little bit of something here. Okay. Let's and do that same strategy on this side here. Okay. Grab a little more burnt sienna. Use my smaller brush and pull it up towards the sky here, connect it to our mast. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab just pure water and let that kind of bleed into our subject. Okay. Now I will say. I think, I'm squinting my eyes, I think those sails are a little too warm. So what I'm going to try to do here is neutralize them a little bit. I'm going to grab a, a cooler color and I'm just going to take and just dab through them. I'm not going to actually use my paintbrush as a brush. I'm going to use it more to blot in color here. I just think it looked a little bit uh, cartoonish maybe it just it seemed unnatural to me all right and so now we've got this big pool of water down here at the bottom of our sails so I'm gonna grab some some thicker pigment and we're gonna guide it into the boat we're gonna give it a place to go here connect it here okay all right let's get some paint going all right, I want kind of a top cool line on the body of this boat. And then we're going to, and what I mean by that is I just mean this, this upper stripe. A lot of boats have this kind of a darkened top to them. Something like that. And again, you can really see now as I add that dark paint in, the contrast we're getting 
from the uh, the white that we left. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix up kind of a warmer dark color for our boom right here. Okay. And I wanna darken up this mast as well. It may be a little too wet. That's okay. All right. And I'm just adding a couple of these are just these are just kind of abstract lines on here. There's not much I'm really thinking about. <clears throat> but now that we're moving towards the body of the boat, I'm going to grab First, I'm going to give this a spray. Again, we're just trying to keep everything alive. Take my paper towel, and there's, it's just too watery here. I'm going to absorb some of that. I'll do it there. I'll do it at the bottom of that sail. Okay. All right, I'm going to use some white watercolor paint. Now, white watercolor paint does not act the same way that our uh, gouache does, or for that matter, any acrylic or oil-based white. It's not necessary. It's still going to be, when I paint this on here, you're going to see it's going to be dark, but it kind of creates this creamy-like consistency, and I really like to use it on boats. It's an excellent color to get this transitionary. Yeah, I just think that looks really nice, especially from that top line, which the top line is kind of bled out on the right over here. So I'm gonna come back through here and again, I'm using my brush. Anytime your, your paper's pretty wet, oops, you almost have to use your brush like a like a little uh, tattoo gun or something, you kind of just have to dot into the line. If you try to brush it, sometimes it won't pick up the color very well. All right, okay. That is coming along nicely. Let's add a little bit more of that white in there. You can see it's darker than the water, but it, it just is this very kind of creamy gray color. It looks really nice. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing that we did on the top, on the bottom. I'm gonna add somewhat of a, kind of a darker line and just let it bleed up into our main part of that boat there. Okay, so far I think that looks pretty nice. I may come over here and just add a little bit of that dark paint to our other boat. Just looks a little light back here. All right, and we're about ready to start our reflections. Now, this is always the most intimidating part of painting water, but I promise you it is not difficult. What we're gonna do, and I mentioned this earlier, there's two aspects to painting water. You've got the texture of the water and then you have the reflections. The texture of the water, we've already laid a decent base on. We did this when the water was still wet. You can see these kind of softened lines. When we're doing our reflections, we do not want them to be soft. We want them to be very sharp and defined. And really the main rule you have to follow is we want it to be darker than the surrounding water, but we also want it to be a cooler color most of the time. I would say 90% of the time. There are some times if you've got a warm water reflection or something, but most of the time we want to have a very dark, sharp line. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start working here on this reflection. Okay. And I'm going to let the color of that boat just kind of bleed into it. I'm not worried about much. Okay. All right. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to take my smaller brush. You get your main reflection shape going. 
And then you take this little brush here and you just kind of add a few little, little wave outcrops of the shadow here, right? It's not much, just a little bit there. Okay, and we're just going to slowly keep working this until we get it how we want it to be. Now, I think that needs to be a little bigger. Yep. All right, let's work on our mast here, which it comes straight down, but I'm not going to paint a straight line. Again, I'm going to kind of put some dots here, and then I'm going to kind of create a few little zigzags as we work our way down. That looks pretty good for the mast. And you know what? I feel like I got the, the point of this bow a little too sharp. I think that, I think that looks better, I think. Okay. All right. Looking good here. Just drawing a couple of zigzags. Now, I also need to do our sails. All right. Now the sails, they are a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna add, you know, I don't wanna do burnt sienna. I'm gonna add a little yellow ochre. I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna create a sharper, I gotta think about this because I guess I'm painting a little bit in reverse here, right? So that goes to the bow, it curves around. Okay. Again, I'm going to leave a few gaps there so that I can come back and just add a couple little, little squiggly lines there. Okay, let's do the same thing. I'm going to warm it up just a touch. Let's do our main, our main sail here, which would be something. Something like that, I think. Okay, and again, I'm leaving little holes in there. I'm coming back with that brush and just adding some sideways movement to it, right? Okay. We're moving along pretty good here. Now, if you'll notice, our shadow underneath the boat here is a little bit one-toned, and the excuse me, I called it a shadow, <laughs> the reflection under our boat's a little one-toned. It needs to be a little bit darker right under the boat. So I'm gonna add a little bit of dark. I added a little neutral tint, a little neutral gray there. And I also wanna add, well, I wanna scratch in a few lines of light into the shadow. It's still a little too wet right now, so I'm gonna leave it alone. And I'm gonna lean back and kind of squint here and see how are our reflections looking? You know what? I'm going to darken our mast here. And again, I'm trying to just kind of sprinkle that brush down the page. I'm not drawing a single straight line. Okay. And I just want to maybe, maybe darken a few things here. All right, that is looking better. It's not too bad. Okay, let's do the same thing for our boat back here. Again, process is gonna be the exact same. I may use, eh, I'm gonna use my bigger brush. Okay, for the body of the boat, we want it to be nice and cool. And keep in mind, this is a bit further in the distance, so I'm gonna to try to have it a bit lighter. Okay, I'm gonna put a little paint down there. I'm gonna use my smaller brush and just kinda pull it side to side. Let's work our, our mast here. Okay, and let's work our sails. Okay, 
And I'm not as worried about this reflection. I'm doing it maybe a bit quick, but this is just kind of in the background here, so I'm not, I'm not going to fuss too much with that one. This front, this front boat is going to be our, our main, our main attention grabber. That's the one I want to spend time on. And in fact, if I can have the one in the back, maybe a little bit sloppier, <clears throat> it'll kind of have people ignore it a little bit more and draw the focus right where I want it. All right. I'm going to grab this here and I'm going to draw a couple of lines on this sail there. Okay, that looks very nice. I think I can darken up our sail, our, our sail reflections just a touch there. And again, I'm not painting with the brush, I'm just kind of dabbing in there. Okay, I think that looks pretty nice. Looking back at our other boat reflection over here, remember it needs to be darker underneath the boat. So I'm just adding a couple of interjections of color and I'll darken our sails just a, just a, I mean a touch. Okay. All right, let's take a look at our boat here. What do I want to add? Well, I can tell you one thing, you're never going to have a good boat scene without, without, a, few, without a few birds, so I'm going to add a couple of those. When you're adding birds, all you need to do is you need maybe two shapes that people identify as birds, and the rest of it, you can just throw in some dots, and people will automatically assume that they are birds. Okay. I think that looks nice. Let's add some folks on board here. I'm going to grab that white again. And I'm going to throw a person right here on the side. Grab my burnt sienna. Just very carefully pull a little face in there. And I'll probably add a shirt or something on them later once this dries. Okay, taking a look here, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I am gonna spray this one more time just to get it wet. And I want this transition on our water, it needs to be darker towards the bottom. And we've got, a, it is a little bit darker. We worked on that on our first wash. It's not as dark as I'd like it to be. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this flat brush Cool this dark patch down. And I'm going to take, and I'm just going to work it along the bottom of this. I've got to be careful because I don't want to mess with our, our reflection too much. I think it looks really nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper towel. And if you watched my video on reflections in the street, we did a, a Paris scene. I'm going to use this and just come back and soften the edge so it just kind of blends into our already created uh, transition. I just wanted, I want to see that dark, dark line here on the bottom. For some reason, with water, I mean, especially water, but same thing goes for when I'm painting cityscapes. The ground is always darker when it's closer to the viewer. And I said ground, I mean, I guess in this case, the water is the ground in a, in a seascape, but it just always adds something a little, little nicer there. Okay, I think that reflection looks good. And you know what? I don't want him all by himself. He needs a friend on boat with him. Nobody goes sailing alone. Grabbed a little lavender there. A little burnt sienna. Okay. Hmm. I think we're good. I'm going to let this dry and we're going to come back and add our final details. All right. We are back. This is completely dry and we're going to finish this painting up. 
One thing I noticed while I was drying this is I want to add a couple more texture lines to our water. I think these got a little bit too light. And so I'm going to take here my brush. And I'm just going to add a few, a few dark lines across the water. Not, not too many, but just a couple. And the rule of thumb for these is that they're going to be thicker and larger at the bottom. And then as you obviously get out away from our vantage point, they get a little bit slimmer. Okay. Then I'm just going to take my paper towel and just kind of soften, soften them up just a little bit there. I just felt like we needed a little more texture on the water. Okay. That looks much better. Let's work on our two figures on this boat. I'm going to give this individual a little jacket. Yeah, I think that looks nice. And I also wanted to, on this boat here, I'm going to take a little of that burnt sienna, mix it in this pail just to darken it up, neutralize it a bit. But I wanted to put, sails always have some sort of do a C11. I don't know. Just some kind of classification. Actually, you know what? I don't really like that. I thought that was going to look much better than it did. We're going to leave those plain. We're going to leave those plain. All right. Let's clean our sail up a little bit here. That looks nice. Okay, maybe just a dark mark here on the back of this to indicate maybe a, a person or two on there. All right, let's grab our gouache. We're going to add a couple of highlights. We're getting pretty close here. I must say, I think our sky turned out excellent. I really like the look of that. All right, I'm going to take this, just cruise a little line there. Let's see if I add a few little reflection points on there. Maybe one there. I want to pull some vertical lines in the back here. These could be other boats and things. Smear some of them out. Okay. And maybe as our very last thing may add just a little bit more weight and darkness to the the edge of our our little land mass back there just a little bit okay how do we think that looks kind of taking a step back squinting a little bit yeah i think that looks nice okay i'm going to sign this and Let's talk about what we did right and what could have been done a little bit better. All right. Always fun to sign your work. All right. There we go. Let's see. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this painting. Again, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I focus pretty heavily on cityscapes. So doing water scenes is not something I do a lot, but I need to do more often. Um, I got some requests on the channel to do, I had a uh, kind of a time-lapse video of some water and I had some requests from some subscribers to do a full length kind of tutorial on a, on a boat scene. So if you're watching this, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, all right, what could we have done better? I think I could have kept things a little cleaner with that boat. I also think the texture on our water, as you saw, I had to come back and darken the bottom. I also had to come back and add these couple of lines. I think the lesson there is that I should have just thickened up and darkened the paint on my palette during that first wash before I came in and added those lines. I also could have waited just a touch longer 
to maybe have this dry a little bit. Um, other than that, I mean, generally, I'm, I'm pretty pleased here. Things we could have done better, or excuse me, things, things we did well, I think this transition of the light water here down to the blue, I think it really looks like a sky reflection. I think it looks really nice. Sky looks good. That big heavy cloud over there turned out great. I think our main boat looks pretty good. Um, yeah, other than that, I think we did pretty good. I may add, I'm just sitting here looking, maybe just a couple of vertical lines in the distance here to signify some other boats or something back there. But anyways, if you stayed with me all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. I hope you consider subscribing. And then if you like this demo, um, I will be putting these up for sale in my store sometime by the end of the week. So anyways, thanks again and keep on painting.